When throwing plates, if you are using an absorbent bat like wood or hydro bat, uh, a plaster bat, you may not need to actually cut it, but because I am throwing on a plastic bat, um, it always needs to be cut on the day you throw it, and then a lot of times you have to recut it after it has set because it reattaches to the bat and it takes a, a second second cut. Now the one thing to keep in mind is you always have to stay within that same groove. If you allow the wire to ride up, like if you don't start it in the same groove, you can really kind of mess up the bottom. Uh, what I tell my kids is if they are having any difficulty lining uh, it up with the same groove, just take a wooden knife and run the wooden knife along in there to make that groove a little bit more prominent so when the wire goes in, it is um, going to stay down low. And the other thing to keep in mind is always make sure that as you're pulling, your hands are down beneath the level of the bat. Um, that's really, really important or else uh, I've had my kids where they they cut them unevenly. Now this one is firm on the top. It is leather hard. But the bottom of it is just a little bit on the soft side. So I'm going to set a bat on top, flip it upside down, remove the original bat without disturbing the rim. The reason that I flip it like that is if you just take your hands and flip it, um, you can warp it and warping can uh, create a memory and then you end up by getting a warp in your plate eventually. Now I'm just going to let this sit out for a little bit and I'll come back and I'll trim this when it is a little bit stiffer. Now this one this is fully leather hard. It does not have a sticky spot to it. And this is probably maybe, oh, uh, just a little under three quarters of an inch in thickness on the base. Now, I'm going to trim this one first, since it's ready, and I want you to notice where the angle change happens on the interior. Um, I threw this one in order to trim a foot because, again, I left enough thickness. If I wanted a completely flat bottom, I would have flattened out the disc more to begin with, but right underneath that angle change is where I want to place the exterior of the foot ring. So I'm going to say right around there. The most common mistake that my students make when they trim a foot is they start making it too small. The The key thing is once we have a foot ring, we want that wall to angle up from the foot ring. We never want to have a horizontal angle uh, because a horizontal angle is going to not look as good and also you can't really glaze that without danger of it sticking. Now I am using a uh, diamond core sticky bat and uh, you will notice I actually drew lines on this. The diamond core tools sent this to me a few years ago and it is really nice especially for low wide items when you're trimming there are you know just so many different ways that you can trim you can use a, a pad of clay for something like this you could use lugs you could use a giffen grip but for the sticky bat um, i think plates are great for the sticky bat now when uh w if you ever use a sticky bat sometimes the sticky quality starts to go away a little bit. I discovered one really great thing to wash it with is Dawn Power Wash and that brings the surface back to that nice uh, sticky surface and you might have to reapply the um, the, the lines of the, uh, the circles. So as I put this on there I just try to get it by eye. I, I try to get it as centered as I can and for trimming in my personal studio, I use a lot of different things, but I'm going to use the tool that I use at school with my students. This is the Kemper uh, double-ended uh, ribbon tool. The one end has the nice uh, kind of a corner on it. Um, I use this for the kids because I find it economical in the uh, high school ceramics room. Now, the first thing to know about trimming is always go down 
from the top. Never go in from the side. If you go in from the side and your side is uneven, you will always have an uneven foot. So we're going to make our cut straight down from the bottom on the exterior and the interior of the foot. That way our lines should always be parallel. Now, when you are holding the tool, I'm right-handed, so I hold the tool in my right hand and I brace it to my left hand and I physically will touch the tool with my left hand. So see, I'm actually holding the tool with both hands and then I'm resting my left hand on the bottom of the plate. Um, I find that resting the hand on the bottom of the plate is super important for beginners because if they don't have that uh, hand there to stabilize, they end up by uh, having their tool kind of drift and then they don't get it as even. So there's the exterior of the foot ring. And again, my, my base is probably just a little bit more than a half an inch. Now for the exterior wall, I'm just taking this so it angles up directly from the foot. And nice thing about these double-ended tools, you could use either end of the tool, whatever works best for you. Now, because I'm cutting this as a foot ring, I'm actually leaving a distinct foot ring line on the outside. Uh, that is just an aesthetic choice I'm making. I like to do that uh, for the purpose of glazing, to be honest. Um, it is not something that you have to do, of course. So for my students, you don't have to do it this way. I'm just showing you the way that I prefer. Now, I rounded the exterior of that. And now I'm ready to go ahead and do the interior cut. Now, most of my foot rings are typically the same thickness as the walls of the pot, like a foot ring of a bowl or a cup. It's going to be narrow. But in the case of this, I'm actually making this a much thicker foot ring, primarily because this is such a broad form. It gives it a little bit more stability. So notice that I'm making the cut going straight down from the bottom. My hands are stabilized. My left hand is uh, propped there on the, um, the in, inside of the plate. And I'll just kind of tidy this one up too. All right, now the interior of this, I'm going to be trimming flat because again, it's thick. So I want to trim the weight and the thickness off so it's the same thickness as the walls. So as you do this again, I always recommend stabilize your hands and keep them together. Uh, a common mistake that the kids make sometimes is they're not stable and somehow they, they catch the tool and it gouges and they go too deep and they go right through it. I mean, truly, if I had a, I always used to say if I had a quarter for every plate that I trimmed through when I first was learning, you know, I'd have $10, but, uh, in, in truth, you just have to really pay attention to how you're stabilizing your hands. So you can go, you know, inward from the outside or uh, outward from the inside. So whatever works best for you. And here I'm just flattening this a little bit more. Now, it is possible to glaze the underneath side of a plate, just like you could glaze the underneath side of a bowl or a cup. The most important thing is to know how much room you have. So if I were to just set this on here, okay, I have right now, it's the middle is the closest part to the ruler. It's still over an eighth of an inch, but I'm just going to take off a little bit more because I want to make sure that it doesn't get too close to the ruler there. So I have the ability to glaze the inside. Again, there are so many different ways that you can do a plate. I'll do another video sometime of a completely flat bottom plate without a foot ring. Um, I actually like those in my kitchen because I have a, like a vertical rack for my plates and they're not very wide. So There we go. Now, that is looking pretty good. Let's look at my depth here. 
There we go. Now I've got a full quarter of an inch. I don't know if you can see that, but I have a full quarter of an inch in between the ruler and the, uh, the plate surface. Now for uh, the little debris here, I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting that off of there because I don't want to compress it. I'm going to take a rib next. And this, by the way, this is B-Mix that I'm using. And B-Mix is um, a Cone 6 stoneware that uh, I'm using. They, they sell B-Mix in different um, mixtures, but this one is Cone 6. And this one is without grog. I sometimes use the with grog if I'm doing something maybe bigger or with more of an angle and I need a little bit more stability. But for uh, most of my basic forms, I, I do enjoy the grogless B-Mix. It's smooth and it, it almost has a porcelain-like texture. And if you get it really thin, you can get it translucent just like you do uh, porcelain. Okay, last step, I'm just going to use a sponge for a little bit of slip and one of the little red uh, mud tool ribs. Love these things. And I mean, at school, I do have these, but I also have ribs that I've cut from, you know, hotel key type things that work really well. But the, the versatility of these finishing ribs, uh, the mud tool red ribs are just really lovely and smooth anything with a finger if you feel anything. Now, this is really as smooth as I can get it before it, it bisque fires. One thing that I will note is that a lot of times when items get uh, glaze fired, you may find that you have a little bit of roughness that appears. So that will get polished um, after, it's, after it's done. Now I am going to feel this to feel just how thick this is and how thick the walls are, and I want it to be relatively the same thickness. And I actually feel that I could go a little bit deeper with this foot ring. So I'm just going to pop that back on. And I'm just gonna go just a wee bit more. So I'm gonna take this down just a little bit more. Again, I want it to be the same thickness on the walls and the base because I want it to dry evenly. If on a plate, if you have an area that's super thick, um, it won't dry evenly and you are going to be prone to get cracking. I have students all the time who maybe they make their bottoms too thick on their plates. They just don't trim enough away. They end up with a big old S crack and they wonder why. And it's because if the rim dries out and the rim shrinks, but the bottom hasn't dried out yet and it hasn't shrunk, it's got to give somewhere and it's going gonna, it's gonna to crack. There we go. Okay, that just took a little bit more off and I'll take a tiny bit more out here as well at the base of this wall. Okay, now after having felt it, I felt like I wanted to just take off a little bit more. And maybe, I, I think I'll go ahead and show you guys another uh, option of something that you could do. If you wanted it to be a wall hanging, um, I do this quite a bit and that is I'm going to make an undercut and I'm going to get another tool for that. Okay, this is the triangle tip tool. I use this a ton in my classroom. It's the Kemper triangle tip tool and what I'm going to do is just take some of this clay off on the inside of the foot to create more of a, an undercut so it can hang on say like a hook on the wall. Okay, now I just want to feel, yep, with my fingers I just want to make sure it goes inward. And one more time I'll use that finishing rib out here on the outside just smoothing that a little bit more with water. And I didn't trim any more on the bottom, so the bottom shouldn't have uh, gotten any rougher. All right, so if you can see, there's a slight undercut, so I could hold it uh, by a hook or my fingertips. I won't do it now because, of course, it's uh, just leather hard and I don't want it to... Uh, 
damage it. But that gives you a nice alternative for uh, hanging a, a plate, a platter, a bowl, anything like that. Um, right, so there we go. That is trimming a regular plate with a foot ring. An another important note that I will make about drying a plate. So a plate should be dried on its rim that way, I know that it's going to dry evenly. If it's dried on its bottom, sometimes air can't get to the bottom and it stays a little wetter on the bottom and the rim dries first. By drying it on its rim, it helps it to dry evenly and promote more even drying. If I were the least bit concerned, I could also throw maybe a heavy towel over this to slow down the drying so it dries nice and slowly and evenly. This next one I'm going to do a little bit more quickly now. So this is the scooped plate. And remember that a scooped plate is going to have a more narrow foot ring because the angle change happens more narrowly on the inside of the pot, almost like a bowl. So as I uh, put this on there, I'm again thinking about where does that angle change happen on the inside. So this one, uh, as I cut straight down, all that excess is just going to be cut off and so from the exterior of the foot ring it does start to angle up. Again I want the profile of the exterior of the wall to match and be parallel with the interior of the wall. So the outside of the foot ring might be a little bit taller than the inside of the foot ring since it's sweeping up there on the outside. And there I'm just taking a little rib and uh, smoothing out where I cut. Now for the interior of the foot ring, again, I go straight down from the bottom when I make the cuts for the foot ring, and then I know my cuts are parallel. And here I'm just trimming away the interior of the foot ring, again, to have it uh, a nice even thickness from the inside of the wall to the outside of the wall, all the way from the tip, all the way to the base. If you have uneven thickness, if you have a part that gets really thick, you'll have uneven drying and could potentially have some cracking. Here I'm just doing the little undercut on this again with that small little triangle tip tool, double checking my clearance. I'm going to take off a little bit more from the center. Again, if I want to glaze the interior of that foot ring, you have to check the clearance because sometimes um, I do have kids that glaze it when it's far too narrow or far too thin. Now this one uh, will be placed on a bat upside down and allowed it to dry as well. And I'll just point out the sticky bat here. As you can see it has two different sets of bat pin holes and I was using the wide set um, holes for my uh, wheel. And I hope that you enjoyed this. Drop me any questions that you might have below and uh, keep potting if you can.